Welcome everyone to our Spot Solutions Power Automate webinar, Engineering Modern Workflow Solutions. We'll get started here for everyone. So my name is Tamara Hegan. I'm a project manager and business analyst uh, working with SharePoint and Microsoft 365 for the last 23 years. Also with us is John Iwanis. Do you want to introduce yourself, John? Yeah, good morning. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, so uh, my role here, as you can see, uh, Director of Sales. Uh, I've been with Spot for over six years now. Uh, SharePoint M365 has been a strength of Spot Solutions in mine as well. So we've been lucky enough to bring on a lot of great companies and continue to work with them over the years. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm excited to uh, be part of this webinar and I'll follow up with you uh, towards the end. Thanks, Tamara. Absolutely. And today's presenter is uh, Rafi Bin Ali. Rafi, do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. Thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, my name is Rafi and I work as a SharePoint uh, and Power Platform Specialist here. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to actually drill down and, and go into some Power Automate scenarios that are actual real business scenarios that we've dealt with here at Spot Solutions for some of our clients. So we're going to help you conceptualize your solution um, build basic and complex power automate workflows and understand how to make certain choices when you're looking on your at your workflow flows based on your needs. So of the scenarios we're looking at today, the first is a uh, contract approval flow where there are several gates of review before they get final approval at the finance level. So how do we create a space? upload a contract, have it automatically get reviewed before it goes for final approval. We'll also be uh, looking at how to create Excel based reports from information in SharePoint. Uh, and we're going to demonstrate how to build an accountability uh, flow or a notification flow that takes a look within your SharePoint and identifies if people have completed the tasks and goals that they have set. So I'm going to pass this over to my colleague Rafe. So thank you guys. And Rafe, you can go ahead and share your screen. <clears throat> thank you, Tamara. I should say if anybody does have any questions, um, if you've got any concerns, feel free to raise your hand or pop a question in chat or in the QA. Um, button and myself and John will be here to monitor that while Rafe is delivering the session. So uh, please let me know uh, if you guys can see my screen. Yep. Yep. Okay. So good morning, everybody. Uh, um, I will start with a very uh, uh, with the first flow that we have, which is the contract approval flow. Uh, I will build this from scratch uh, in this session to show you and demonstrate how easy it is to uh, actually start using Power Automate. If I go, uh, the, the overall idea for the flow is that uh, people uh, can upload documents in a contracts library, and then it will follow through a, an approval process uh, with different stages, depending on the value of the contract. Um, now, I have a, document library set up for this purpose and the document library has a column for a status which will demonstrate whether 
the flow, uh, whether the document has been approved or rejected, or whether the process is in process, uh, the value of the contract, uh, and other information such as the organization name, contact, contact number, and start date. Um, so let's get started. Um, I will start building this flow. Uh, and then, okay, so in order to build this flow, we will start from make.powerautomate.com. After that, we'll click on my flows and we will uh, create a new flow. When I go into new flow, there are four different types of flows. Three of them run in the cloud, uh, whereas the fourth one is a desktop flow, which we will not cover in this. Uh, for this one, I'll quickly give an overview uh, what these three mean. Uh, Automated cloud flow is based on a certain event that happens uh, and that triggers the flow that starts Rafi, the flow. Yes. We currently only see your create flow screen. You may need to refresh. Like we're not seeing what you're talking about here. We're still at the my flows. Oh, do you uh, do you see me moving the mouse? Yes. Yes, now we do. Thanks. Oh, OK. Uh, so in this one, I'll click uh, instant cloud flow, which means I it will run manually. So no, if we're I seeing go, you move the mouse, but we don't see what you're looking at on the screen. Can you please refresh? OK. Can you see the uh, contracts library open? No, I think you need to reshare. Okay. So can you see it now? Yeah, same as before. OK, and do you see me? I just switched the tab. No, we're not seeing you no. switch the tab. Yeah, the mouse is moving the same, uh, same challenge. OK, hold on. <clears throat> okay, D is it any yes, better now? Yes, now we see it. Yep, now we've got it. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. So in this, I'll start with the instant cloud flow, which is basically a uh, flow where you would uh, we will manually start it so and how in my in in this scenario over here how it's going to start is after the document has been uploaded the user can click on these three dots go and automate and choose from the flow that um, I'll just create right now for you and then start from that. So in order to do that, uh, where we need it to start manually, I'll select instant cloud flow. I'll name this uh, any meaningful name like contract approval. When you're creating a flow, the first thing we need to choose is the trigger. What is it actually that is going to fire off that flow or start the flow? In, the, in my case, I need to start it when the uh, when a file gets up, uh, when someone selects a file 
and select the name. So for this one, I'll select for a selected file and click create. Once this is done, this is the trigger that says for a selected file, which is from SharePoint. There are other triggers as well, depending on, we can also use, uh, depending on the data source, there are different data sources supported in flow. For this purpose, I'm using SharePoint, but we can have documents coming from an external third party system. We can also have documents residing or data residing in uh, systems like Oracle or SQL Server. Uh, in this case, uh, we are for the demo, we are using documents uploaded to SharePoint, and this is a trigger from the SharePoint connector. So in this trigger, I have to provide two things. One is the site address, and one is the library name. So I will click on the selection and this should then enumerate the sites to which I have access to. And from the site, I will choose the my dev communication site, which is this one, Spark on communication. And the library name I will choose is contracts library, which is the title of my library. Okay, so now at this stage, I have, to, I have told the flow that, okay, on this site that I provided and in the library, this is where the flow needs to run. So once I have provided the trigger, I also need to add a step, uh, an action now. What would happen So in this step, you can see this dialog box opens up and this one basically shows you the different uh, actions that are available along with the connectors. So on the top, what you see are what's called connectors. So we have the AI builder, we have desktop, Excel, online, and along with uh, different ones. So these are the ones that are commonly being used uh, according to Microsoft, but then if I click on built in, I can see a whole different list of connectors as it loads. Uh, there's standard connectors and there's premium connectors for which you have to pay. Uh, for my action, what I need to do is once a file gets uploaded, I need to start uh, an approval. And in order to start an approval, uh, I can type in approval here and see what I get. And let's switch over to all. So when I type in approval, approvals are a built-in connector within Microsoft uh, Power Automate. And there's a bunch of different connectors we can, uh, sorry, actions we can use. Uh, create an approval, start and wait for an approval, wait for an approval, and start and wait for an approval of text. Usually in uh, approval scenarios, what we do is we need to start a flow and then we, we, we need to wait for it to complete before we can take the subsequent steps. So, uh, usually what I do is I use uh, start and wait for an approval. So I'll select this.
once this action is uh, added, you'll see that it is very easy and the graphical user interface will actually provide you with uh, hints as to how to configure the action. For example, this one says approval type, and this is mandatory as denoted by this X, uh, this red thing. Maybe I'll zoom in so you guys can see better. And now the approval type, if I click here, I can see that there's uh, four different it's approval types. So there's approve, reject, everyone must approve. So if you have a series of different approvers, for example, it, uh, you go from uh, the user to the supervisor to the manager to HR to finance. So, and you need everybody to have approved uh, before moving to the next stage. This is uh, what you would choose, or you can choose first to respond. Uh, in my case, I will choose everyone must approve. And once I have chosen this, this is uh, going to show me a list below of what I need to configure. It needs to. Uh, hey, Rafi, can I interrupt for a moment? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you had a chance to. A question has come up. Uh, Shaman Deep has a question. I don't know if you addressed that already or, uh, or not. Uh, is it in the chat? No, go that's ahead, Shaman Deep. You Shaman are. Deep. You can yeah. unmute yourself. Yes, what, that's what I'm trying to say. The Q&A feature is not working. Oh, that's interesting. At least for me, it says, uh, "Sorry, we're not. We've run into a technical snag. Please try again." Oh, that might be on Microsoft's side for that. Um, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, my my question is uh, very administrative. Uh, I know we're recording this session. Uh, would this be shared? Uh, with us uh, for uh, for us to revisit? Yes, uh, John will be addressing that at the end of the session, but we will share the video of this session with the attendees. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, so looks like I'm also running into some problem. It says, PKCE authentication service request has timed out because this box is supposed to uh, provide me uh, more details. It's not opening up. Uh, let me maybe uh, sit, try to save and reopen this and see if this is just one of those intermittent problems or something is down. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, flow, it's not even saving. Uh, and the reason it won't save is because I have to provide more information below, but it's not actually loading. So, uh, Tamari, do you think we can just, uh, I can just show the flow that we have pre built? Yes, go thing? ahead. Yes, okay. go ahead and do that. Uh, I just checked, and that flow is fully functioning right now. So, go ahead and walk them through from that one. Okay, <clears throat> we can um, maybe come back to this one after I'm done with that because this one is probably just going to waste time now. It seems to be a Microsoft problem here. There's no reason for this to fail at this step. So, So typically when you're looking at building your flows and creating your flows, a couple of the things while Rafa is getting the setup for you to consider are not just what happens when everything follows the happy path, but also what kind of things you want the system to do if something doesn't go right. So part of what we'll show you here once we pull up this uh, this flow is 
um, once you've gotten approval, there's always a response to an approval. It's either accept or reject or something similar to that. So part of what Rafi is going to do in looking at this flow is to walk you through how you identify what happens if it's not approved. And a lot of people don't think about that when they're trying to develop their workflow. What do I what does the system do if it's not OK, if it's not approved? So that's part of what you're going to see here um, in the workflow that Rafi is going to share with you. This is uh, taking a long time to load. Um, you know what I'm going to do, Rafi, um, can you stop sharing? I'm going to share my screen and I will bring up the workflow and you can share it because I'm not having. Um, yeah, I think. Challenge. Uh, yeah, 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 I think that's better. So you don't... Rafi walked you through creating the site and the contracts library. We got the properties for the file so that we understand all of the metadata associated with the selected file. And I believe we were right here. So here we had an initial financial review. And based on those, instead of approve reject, we uh, selected custom responses. So Rafi, go ahead and and uh, I'll just click on the next thing once you finish describing here. OK, thank you, Tamara. Uh, so yeah, this is the box that wasn't loading for some reason. So OK, so in this one, um, it says for first, it's actually very small to read. Uh, I will I will bring my screen up a bit just a second. Thank you, thank you. So this one, as you can see, um, I on the other side, I was struck on customers, uh, This the first one. So the approval type that has been selected in this one is uh, custom response, wait for one response. And if you scroll below, please. Uh, so in this one, uh, we have two responses that we have identified. One is review complete, and the other one is changes required. So essentially, the first one is an approve, and the second one is a rejected. Uh, uh, we can add more items, add new item. Uh, if you scroll below, so in the title, as you can see, the name has been provided, which is the name of the file. Uh, and we have mentioned has been submitted. So when the user, when the approver gets this email. Oh, I'm sorry. The... That's my bad. I accidentally clicked. or it kicked me out, I'm not sure which it was. There we go. So after the name, so you can see the title says the file name. Uh, this green thing that you see that says name, that's a dynamic property that you can select. This will be uh, a whole list that you can select from. It has been submitted for contract review, then assigned to. Um, we have hard coded this as uh, my email address. However, in a uh, scenario, it would be like a manager, which we can get from Active Directory. Uh, and then below we have the details and which is actually the body of the email. So anything that is specified over here will be the included in the body of the email. Uh, if you scroll uh, a little bit, please. And then we have the item link and then the item description, which is again the name. We can make it as descriptive as we want 
it to be. So at this point, we have configured the email, the adaptive card email that is gonna go uh, to the approvers. So now the next step, okay, so this approval gets sent out. What's to be done with it, right? Uh, so when this approval works, in, uh, what you get once the approval completes, there's a list of responses that you get back. And one of the properties you can see that I have selected over here, it says responses. So responses is basically an array uh, and it will have a bunch of different values depending on uh, <clears throat> how many approvers <clears throat> it went through. Uh, for this one, we'll then iterate over each response and we'll check if the response is equal to review complete. And if it is, then we need to add a condition. Uh, and that is another connector uh, built in. It's not a connector, it's an action, sorry. Uh, and it's called a condition uh, where we select, uh, specified the condition up top, and then uh, we have to specify what happens if the condition is true or if it evaluates to false, what happens? So if the condition is yes, if the response is equal to review complete, the next step we'll check is from SharePoint, we will check uh, the total contract value, which is the field in that document library that I showed you. And if the contract value is, yes. And if the contract value <clears throat> is less than 25,000, then this is another condition. So at this point, we need to do a further check. So we're checking if the contract is less than 25,000. If it is, if yes, then we send an email to the person who uploaded the document and we specify that the review has been reviewed and is under approval threshold, the reviewer provided and whatever the review was uh, approver provided, it will be uh, shown as you can see in response comments. Uh, and then once the user has been notified that, okay, this is the status, uh, we also go in and we make sure to update the status of the approval field. Uh, so Tamara, if you can just show the in document library, please. So you can look, uh, see the status field is there and we this will get updated at that point, uh, depending on that stage. So yeah, uh, the flow please. Okay, so this will complete if it's in 25,000. So what happens if it's more than 25,000, which is the condition if no. So if no, if the value is more than 25,000, so we check the responses and we need to forward it to a higher level because the um, in the scenario, $25,000, we need to forward it to the chief financial officer. Uh, and at this stage, we will either just make sure that everyone must approve. Uh, uh, then the details are provided. If you will notice in the first one, we had selected custom responses. Uh, in, in this one, we are choosing approve and reject because uh, when you send it to the CFO, it would usually be approve or reject in most common scenarios, although you could choose a custom response as well where the CFO can forward it to, I don't know, the chairman or the president, you know, depending if it's like a million bucks. But uh, just to illustrate the different approval types, uh, we have selected to uh, diversify the demo. Uh, and then we have the other fields like the title assigned to, which is assigned uh, to Tamara, uh, details and all the information. Again, the assigned to would uh, has been hard coded only for the purposes of this demo. It would 
usually be a field in your SharePoint list, or it would be coming in from another source like Active Directory. Okay, so this is done. We now have sent it for approval to the CFO. So what's next? So the CFO respond with an approve or the CFO will reject and send it back to uh, the previous level. So again, we are checking the response property that we get from the flow. And you, uh, when you use the approve or reject response, the responses are get is either approve or reject. So in this case, we're checking if the response is equal to yes. If yes, then uh, uh, yes, please. We send an email. Again, this is a notification email uh, that gives out details about the CFO comments and the reviewer comments and uh, any other details uh, like Please proceed with the final negotiations. And then we go and then we update the uh, item again to show the updated approval status that it has been approved at the CFO level. Uh, and then if no, so this concludes the if yes, if the CFO has approved it. But if, the, if no, if the CFO doesn't approve it, we need to send out another email that uh, lets the uh, person know about their decision and then we update the status uh, that it was rejected. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's uh, before um, I go further, because I think there's another condition I need to go over, let's run a sample flow just to Put things into perspective and see if maybe some questions come up. So tomorrow, if you uh, if you can please upload a document in the library. So and I'll just admit. So here Tamara is uploading a document in the library. So the document has been uploaded. However, you can notice that the status has been set to in progress. Uh, this is the default value for in progress, any item that gets updated. Uh, and then the user will go in and the user will fill in the details about the document, such as the name and the uh, number and the contract value, which is what we would need. And in this case, uh, Tamara has specified $75,000. And the user would then click save. Uh, at this point, the approval flow has not run because if you remember, we had selected the flow to be run manually. So now if Tamara goes in and clicks on the contract review and approval, So this will slide open a pane and the user can run the flow. And the flow has started. And I think I will receive an email. So let me open up. Uh, So you can see in the 28 day run history that it's starting to run. So once Rafe receives the first email for approval, the process will move on to the next step. And then because I chose to make it over the 25,000 threshold, I will receive another uh, email for approval once Rafe has completed his. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'm going to have to share my screen and then yep. you can show your screen again. So, Absolutely. Thank you. So as you can see, um, I have received, uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. So as you can see, uh, the way we had configured the action, the approval action, uh, it says executive summary has been submitted for contract review. Executive summary is the name of the document that 
um, I had shown was the dynamic uh, content called name, which is the file name. Uh, and if I scroll below, you will see uh, this adaptive card. This is called an adaptive card, and it has all the details such as requested by Tamara, uh, date created, the link, so I can open it up and review this. Uh, and then details in case I just want to look usually. And once I'm done here and I'm satisfied that, okay, I do I need the changes required? As you can see, this was an option that was uh, specified in the approval action. These two review complete and changes required. So at this point, I will do a review complete. And I'll add some comments. And I'll say submit. So, so uh, Tamara, if you can just please uh, share your screen now. Yep. Um, because I, uh, and if we can also open up the, uh, the flow that is running to actually show what's happening, please. Yeah, so here you can see the flow and it's running. And you can see where the flow has gone. Go ahead, Rafi. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the initial finance review, uh, the this blue uh, action, which is the approval action. So this is the one that I just approved. And if you please uh, uh, expand, apply to each six. Okay, so this one is now pending. Uh, it's not going to show the status. So I think tomorrow you will receive an email because it's 75,000. Uh, I did, yes. Um, so you can get these in both email and Teams. Since Rafi showed you what it looks like in your email, I'm going to show you what it looks like in Teams. So because I was the person who requested this, I got a notification that Rafi had completed his and I see his comments. Because for the purposes of this test, I'm also the next approver right here in my Teams feed, I have a request set. So very similar to the email. So I want you to see that you have both options. So it's been um, sub submitted, reviewed, and is ready for final review and approval. Um, the comments Rafe had uh, looks good, thanks. I can click on this link to open the item. Uh, I can put in my comments and I can either approve or reject this item. So I'm going to say. Approve. And so that's now approved as the person who made the initial request. I have both an email and uh, a Teams that shows me the full item, the same email information. Now if I go into my email, I get that final email executive summary has been approved with the following comments. I agree, please proceed, looks good, and please proceed with final negotiations. And if I come here, you'll see that the executive summary that I just uploaded has been approved and all of the information has been added. So who approved it and what the date of that approval was. If I refresh this, I think Rafi will be able to show you So if I expand that, it'll actually start to show on each of these items. Go ahead, Rafi. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tamara. So this uh, concludes the uh, review uh, process, uh, which is a multi-stage approval where uh, the flow was sent to two different approvers, and depending on uh, <clears throat> the contract value, it was sent to a higher level or not. Uh, so this is a very uh, <clears throat> common scenario. Uh, sorry, excuse me. This is a very common scenario in uh, organizations, and it's a very uh, easy uh, to build uh, uh, flow, which doesn't take a very long time. 
to build and that's why I was trying to hoping but something is uh, up on my end so uh, but yeah so this is uh, shows you a complete uh, real world scenario wherein a, a user can upload documents and uh, we have implemented this scenario uh, for many different clients um, is are there any questions on this or before I move on to the next one or tomorrow have I missed anything in this one? Um, I don't think so. I think the goal here was to show that that multi-stage approval that has conditions. And I think whether you're looking at it from contracts or whether you're looking at it from something else, that's still a really big need in most organizations. Did anybody have um, feel free to to unmute and ask a question if you have a question um, about that flow or any aspects of that flow before we move on. Okay, go ahead, Rafe. Okay, thank you. So I'll share my screen again. So. The next flow that I will be showing is um, a flow that is uh, that will show you uh, a lot of things in one flow, and which is uh, how to um, gather data from any data source and then export it into Excel, depending uh, uh, and process it so it can be sent out in a report format. Um, so let's me start by showing you the list of uh, data. So in my, which is a real world scenario, we have uh, a list of items that we're uh, gathering data for that user putting in. Uh, and what we need to do is every month we need to create a report in Excel, which uh, provides insight and information on this data. So, and the final output is an Excel file that gets generated and it looks something like this. Uh, so there's a whole, bunch of things that is happening here. And uh, one of the things is uh, how to do different calculations in a flow. Uh, usually date time calculations are uh, can be very tedious. So uh, we will see that in the flow. Uh, we will also see how to create an Excel file, which is a very common scenario where we need to create Excel files based on a template uh, for reporting purposes. Uh, so I'm just going to try just opening up the flow and Tomorrow, maybe uh, you should open up and then we'll just. Because this one is taking very long and this is a big flow, so. OK, give me just a moment. Yeah. I can send you the link. Yeah, it's still loading. 
All right, I will share my screen right now. There you go. So this is the um, accountability report. So I'll start by expanding the first one and I'll just keep going as we did before. Uh, yeah, thanks. So in this one, uh, the flow type that is being used, if you recall, I mentioned there are three different types of cloud flows. Uh, automated, instant, and scheduled. Uh, the contract approval was an instant flow, which means that it was started manually. Uh, it could also have been done as an automated flow, as in as it could trigger, it could have triggered as soon as the file was uploaded. Uh, so, but in this one, what we have is a recurrence flow and recurrence flows are basically used uh, if you need to do uh, tasks and you have to repeat them. Uh, in certain interval like day, month, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, this one runs every, uh, the, uh, so Tamara, if you can please click on edit in recurrence. Uh, so you can see the frequency for this one is one day. Uh, if you click on the day, please. Uh, Yeah, and so you can see you have the option to choose month, week, day, hour, minute, seconds, and you can configure it. Um, once this is configured, uh, where I have specified that, okay, run this flow daily, uh, I add some variables. So if you scroll down, uh, compose three, and this is I'm converting a time for the current report because when the report in Excel format gets generated, I need it in a, a particular format. Internally, uh, the time is stored as UTC, uh, but that time is the number of ticks. We, we usually don't want that in the report. We want it to be more user friendly. So. I am converting it from UTC, which is in uh, the United Kingdom someplace, and converting it into Pacific time zone so the user can see what their time zone is. Uh, so this is what this step does. And for this one, I'm using uh, what's called an expression. Uh, an expression is convert from UTC, uh, which is an expression, uh, yeah. So, and when you start typing in the expression box, you will start getting all these different expressions, which are essentially functions that are, you can use in your flow. And there's a whole list of them, and you would see the common ones here. Uh, so if you can go to compose the next one. Uh, in this one, yes, I'm doing another compose. Uh, if you can just uh, zoom in, please, uh, Tamara. And then I'm doing some checks here. What I'm checking for is uh, in this scenario, the report runs uh, either the mid month or the report runs uh, at the end of the month. So depending on when it's uh, running, the report should mention the appropriate title. So this is another expression, which is an if, and it's checking if it's the end of the month. Uh, if it's the middle of the month, then uh, change the title of the report to say middle of the month. Uh, if you can scroll down. Uh, and this is an example of a very advanced flow. As you can see, this is uh, the name of this. Uh, this is another action called Compose, which I have renamed to Excel template. And what is happening here is the Excel file that I showed you. I showed you the PDF printout of that. Uh, so that's another thing we'll see how to convert Excel into a PDF file in Power Automate. Um, but before we get that PDF, we need that data to be in Excel. Uh, 
And for in this flow, what we are showing, uh, hoping to actually show is that uh, the Excel template is saved within the flow itself. The benefits of saving the Excel file template within the flow itself is that end users uh, will not be able to change the template. Sometimes users can go and by mistake, you know, they can uh, open the file and uh, micro because Microsoft is auto saving if it opens in the web pane. So sometimes they can inadvertently, you know, uh, do something and saves and it messes up the whole template, which we don't want happening in this scenario. So instead of saving the template in a document or library uh, and then retrieving from there, what we are doing in this scenario is for safety and security, we're saving the Excel file within uh, the flows memory and we will be manipulating data within flow. So there will be nothing going on external uh, to the flow. So this is, uh, we have saved the Excel template. Uh, so if you can scroll down, please. Yeah, so let's start by showing the scopes. I don't think we need to go over the variables because uh, that is, I think, administrative of the flow. So uh, if you can, uh, expand the create temporary file, please. So the first step that I do over here is taking from the template that I that is above, I create it as, a, as an Excel file in SharePoint. Uh, and once that file is created, because right now the file is stored in memory, right? Uh, but before we can manipulate the data, it needs to be uh, stored someplace. Uh, so, uh, this will create a temporary file. Think of it like, uh, you know, how you have a staging database. So this is like a staging file that will be created so we can process this data. And then it has, it provides the file name and then the file content, which is coming from up top that I showed you. Uh, this one is using another expression called base64 to binary, which basically when we save anything, we save it in, uh, in a format called base64, which is uh, Hello? an image. Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you, but now you come back. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, so basically base64 is an image, uh, is a, a string representation of any binary data that you can use. So the Excel file um, was stored above as base64, uh, but in order to save it back, we need to convert it back into binary. So this is base64 to binary, convert and save to SharePoint. After this, if you can please expand update or row eight. Okay, so at this point, this is a con action coming from Excel connector. Uh, Excel online connector is another built-in connector that is provided as part of your Microsoft um, uh, licenses. Uh, not all licenses have this, but uh, usually I think E3 and E5 licenses, which companies usually have, will have this. Uh, it's an Excel online connector, which basically allows you to add data and retrieve data from Excel files. So, and you can see that Excel icon right next to update row eight, which tells you that this is an Excel online uh, connect action. Uh, in this one, then I specify the location of the site, that document library, the file name, and then I also specify the table where we want to add the data in. So as you know, Excel file is basically tables, rows and columns, uh, it's a matrix. So I specify the table name, which is in this Excel file. And I also specify column one as, uh, which is the key name, which is a primary key and the key value. And then I pass in, this uh, data that I want to add. And in this one, you can see what this is doing is populating the header. Uh, 
Excel file as well, so uh, we can show it together. It makes more, uh, you know, sense. Uh, if you want, I can send you the. I have it open. Just give me one second. Okay, I'm gonna paste it in chat. Uh, and the Excel file, anyone. So as you can see, uh, if you scroll all the way to the top, the what that action is doing, uh, it is adding the accountability report and the date and the mid-month report at the top of the page. Uh, so this is what has been done in the flow so far. Uh, so if you can switch to the uh, flow, please. OK, and then we go, uh, we can skip over this step. This is, I think uh, I need to speed things up. Uh, get a row fix, uh, we can skip this one too. Uh, this is some administrative stuff. The reason I'm skipping it is because um, um, there might be empty rows uh, within the Excel. So we, we, we don't want the report to actually, you know, have empty rows and then data and empty rows. So get a row fix is essentially fixing that part. Uh, OK, so now we move on to the select. OK, so this is select is one of the uh, actions that is available in Power uh, Automate. And it basically allows you to do a key mapping. So you can do a key mapping from an array and you can specify which field. So as you can see uh, in the select, I have specifying from and where I say from, I say the row. Uh, so row is basically an array. And then as you can see the fields below that, once I have specified, okay, this is the uh, array from where I need to select these values. Uh, I Then I can start mapping them. And if you see below, I'm mapping name to title, I type to certain other field and category count uh, to, and this is I'm doing to actually uh, select values. So I will be able to use them dynamically in my flow below. Uh, it's also uh, a good approach for the reason that when you have an array, and this is like a JSON array, you might have other properties which uh, you might uh, find like if you have like, let's say 50 different properties, then referencing them all the time uh, will probably be very time consuming and the flow will also. Which is this huge chunk of data, I'm only selecting the columns that I need and I'm mapping them back to the fields in my Excel file. So this is what the select is doing. Uh, so if you scroll down, please. OK, so in this scenario, there's a, uh, there's a different uh, uh, filters that I'm doing. As you can see, it says filter for communication, inspection, and filter for safety. Uh, so basically, at this stage, what's uh, happening is because I need to process uh, the data for different types of records in the system. So there are three different types of records in the system. One is a communication record, one is an inspection, and one is a safety meeting. Uh, and in order to process these separately, because I need to do different processing, I'm from the first select, I'm doing a further sub-select. Uh, and it's all doing the same thing, but uh, if I just look at filter for the middle one, you can see I am from the data that I've already filtered, I'm doing a 
further sub selection based on the type and I say when the type is equal to inspection. Uh, one thing to notice over here in this flow is the how the arrows are under the select. So after first select, you will see uh, those three boxes in blue, they are actually in parallel. Uh, and the other steps are one after the other, which is sequential. So in parallel, what's gonna happen is because I want all this data to be ready before I go to the next step, but simultaneously, I also want, do not want it to be sequential because if I, if you make it sequential at this stage, um, let's say the first one takes five seconds and then the second one takes five seconds and the third one takes five seconds also. Uh, so that's 15 seconds. Although if you ran it in parallel, all those things can happen parallel and depending on the uh, resources being consumed, it would in all likelihood be much faster. And the, obviously none of this is taking 15 seconds. It is taking more than 15 seconds. Uh, so this making it parallel is in this case is advantageous in the sense that this will make the flow run faster. Uh, so if you have a if you if your data is not big, let's say you only have a hundred items, then you can also make it sequential. That's not a problem. Uh, so now I if you can scroll this red box again, please, the update Excel data. OK, if you notice this uh, red box, this is what's called a scope in Power Automate. A scope is a good uh, technique in Power Automate for uh, you to organize a flow. As you can see, uh, the, the biggest benefit of using what's called a scope uh, and a scope is just another action. If you click on the, uh, tomorrow, if you can just click on the plus sign anywhere, we're not gonna add an action, but I just wanna show them what the scope is and add, uh, yeah, add an action. And if you type in scope, so you can see that scope. Uh, so th that's basically it. Uh, yeah, we don't have to add it. You can exit please. So the what the scope does is, helps you organize if the flow starts getting very large in a, in a scenario. What this is doing is, let's say uh, the client calls in and says, oh, you know, the flow failed and it's not running. Uh, it will be very easy to actually pinpoint the exact location if you have scopes in it, because you can then directly, uh, the, the flow debugger will show you which scope failed. And instead of trying to figure out where it might have failed if it's a long flow, uh, organizing in the flow makes sense. The other thing also is you can actually copy paste a whole scope from one flow into another. So tomorrow, if you can just click the three dots uh, uh, here. Yeah, and uh, so you can see it says the first one is copy to my clipboard. Uh, Let's say you have, let's say you need to copy paste maybe 30 different actions, right? Or 20 different actions. Um, one approach is if they are not part of a scope, you will have to go into each one manually, copy clipboard, paste, copy clipboard, paste, and you're gonna have to do it 20 times. The benefit of a scope is I, if I amalgamate them within a scope, I all I have to do is copy to my clipboard once and I can move this whole scope from one flow into another. Uh, another related benefit of using a scope is let's say the flow is failing for some reason. Now in Microsoft Power Automate, we don't have any versioning capability. So how do I like how do I isolate the problem? So if you move everything in the scope, you can actually copy clipboard. Uh, so Samara, if you just copy to the clipboard, and if you open Notepad, please, I just want to show them when you paste, you know, an organization technique in Power Automate. So if you have a Notepad open, 
and let's say you want to delete a bunch of actions, right? And because you think that that action might be the reason why the flow was failing, you can copy to clipboard. It's basically text. And this is safe. And now we can go and we can delete the scope from the flow, save it and run it. And then once the problem has been fixed, we can copy it from Notepad and paste it back in, into the flow. So that's another technique that is used a lot once the flow starts getting bigger. Uh, so yeah, please, uh, the flow again. So yeah, so this is the scope. In the scope, basically uh, different scopes, what is essentially happening is from the select that I showed you the array, I'm the primary thing that is happening in all these scopes is updating the Excel sheet, which you can see Excel online and populating the data in Excel. So this is essentially what is happening here. Uh, and this is again using the Excel connector and updating the table in the Excel file as was done up before. So uh, yeah, let's scroll down, please. And then I have injected an artificial delay because sometimes what happens is uh, the flow can time out. So in order, to, and uh, sometimes what also happens is that uh, the data, uh, because Excel file, the data is being populated. So the flow has a read only lock on that Excel file. So before we can do any further processing, which in this case is converting that Excel into PDF, we need to make sure that the file has been properly closed and, dis and the resources disposed off. Otherwise you'll get an error. So I have added a delay. This is another action and this is also a technique used in flows a lot. If you need to simulate an artificial delay for whatever reason, even in during troubleshooting uh, reasons, you can add an action that's called a delay and you can specify for how long do you want the, uh, uh, the flow to pause before moving on to the subsequent steps. So in this case, it will pause for one minute. And then uh, if you can expand the scope PDF, please. And in this case, the third thing that we are showing in the flow is how to take that file or any file and convert into PDF. And this is another very common scenario, converting Word document or uh, in this case, Excel into PDF. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm getting the file content from SharePoint. Uh, you can see that this is a green connector. Usually SharePoint connectors are green. Uh, in this one, I'm saying from the site address and I'm providing the file name, which file, whose content we want to re retrieve. Okay, so uh, at this point, I have the content. Now, in order to convert a file into PDF, there's a different ways, but the free way to do it is you can save a file into uh, your OneDrive. And OneDrive has built-in functionality to convert it and convert documents into PDF out of the box for free. So we don't have to resort to any third-party connectors or any premium business licenses to achieve this. Uh, but in order to get this functionality free of cost, what we need to do is first take the files from SharePoint and save it into OneDrive, which is happening in create file to action. So in this action, I'm save, I'm taking the file and creating this file again in a different location, which is OneDrive for business. Uh, remember, this free PDF is only part of OneDrive for business. I don't think it is available for OneDrive, personal OneDrive. So you need OneDrive for business. Uh, okay, so once the file has been uploaded to OneDrive, we can then convert it into PDF using Microsoft's own built-in functionality, which is free. And 
there is another action called convert file. And, and as you can see, all it needs is a file ID and uh, the type that we want to convert it to. And I have specified PDF. Once the file has been created, I will have this file in memory. The flow will hold the PDF representation of the file in memory, but I still have yet to save it. Uh, so the next step, which is a create file, is essentially taking from convert file, which is a PDF file in memory, and saving it into SharePoint. And uh, again, in this action, I'm specifying the site address, uh, the document library, and the file name and file content, which are dynamically dynamic properties from the action above, which is the convert file. And once the file has been saved to SharePoint and then just uh, in the next, uh, the last final step, sending it out as an email to the users. Uh, so tomorrow, if you can uh, please scroll down, which is uh, send an email action. And the, this was shown in the other flow as well. And this just sends out an email uh, to the users with the file. So now uh, just, for this one, as you in this one, we saw how to create a PDF, how to populate an Excel file uh, with data from any data source. Uh, it doesn't have to be SharePoint. It can be from your external systems. It, it can even be from, let's say, Microsoft Forms. You have, let's say, you have a Microsoft Form. You you can even gather that data and uh, populate another Excel uh process that data uh, we also saw how to save a template within the flow instead of keeping it outside in case the template is very sensitive and you, you don't want other people uh, uh changing it by mistake uh and uh i also discussed some troubleshooting uh techniques like using scopes uh and expressions in the flow so this one concludes uh this flow and tomorrow if you can just okay that's good